let's dive into a few questions here. So with regards to uh, forces and dynamics. So the first one is uh, an interesting one because it asks us to explain inertia. And you know, can we explain it to a 10 year old? I always like thinking about these types of questions because of the fact that it forces you to think, you know, how can you explain something in very simple terms? So inertia is very difficult to explain uh, to anybody. I mean, to a 10 year old, it probably would be uh, difficult. Although I uh, have asked uh, chat GPT okay, at the bottom um, and I'll show you what the response and it was a pretty good one. So inertia, if you're explaining it in very simple terms is every single object that you have, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's made up of stuff. So if you say matter, then you know, a 10 year old may not understand. So you can just say it's made up of stuff. So you can take, let's say a cup. Well, if you take a cup and it's made up of stuff, it's going to have this wonderful property where it's going to try to stay as it is. It doesn't really want to do anything. So if you're going to sit it on a table, it's just going to sit on a table. Um, if you're going to try to move the cup, okay, it's going to try to resist the movement because it just wants to stay where it is. So it's going to take you to kind of push it or you know, pull it along. So it is this concept of staying and doing exactly the same thing, okay, as it has been doing. So if it's just sitting there, it wants to just sit there. And inertia, this property, okay, wants to keep it stayed there. If it's moving, okay, then it will try to continue moving unless there's something stopping it. So that's what inertia is all about. It's very much, um, you know, if you relate it back to mass. So mass and inertia play uh, pretty much exactly the same role. It's almost that we use them interchangeably. Okay? But inertia is this concept of trying to stay. So you know, prevent movement okay? or stay in the movement that it's already in. And interesting enough, you know, when I ask this of ChatGPT, okay, it has done probably a, a better job than me. So here it says that inertia is like a superhero power. Okay, which is pretty cool for a 10 year old. So it's, you know, it's that property okay, or superhero power that objects have, especially when they're not moving, right? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, okay, so it just wants to kind of stay and do what it is. It's reason, uh, it's the reason things like to stay the way that they are. So if you're playing with a toy car and you stop pushing it, it doesn't stop right away. It keeps rolling a bit. Okay, and again, that's because inertia just wants to continue on its way. It has this property where it wants to do what it has been doing. So that toy car wants to keep moving if it can. Of course, friction will slowly stop it. Now, that is the inertia concept. So inertia make, makes things want to stay still or keep moving the way they are. And we need to use force to change that. Of course, you know, if you tell a 10 year old, maybe you don't want to say force. We might want to say, you know, we need to use, you know, a push or some kind of a pull, okay, um, to change its actual movement or the way that it's stayed and fixed. So this is actually pretty good, okay, on Chat GPT's part. Okay, so here um, for question number eleven, what has to be true about the net force in order for an object to satisfy Newton's first law of motion? So this one uh, hopefully is easier for you to answer. Well, what has to be true, so first law is, okay, the fact that the net force is equal to zero. What that means is that all the forces must cancel each other off. So um, all of the forces, okay, will cancel each other off. So F net has to be equal to zero if it wants to satisfy Newton's first law. Now, 12, if an object is moving at a constant speed but changing direction, then would that mean that the net force is equal to zero? Why or why not? The net force is not equal to zero. So if you have any change of motion at all, so speeding up, slowing down, and in fact, in this case, you, can, you may not be speeding up or slowing down, but you can be changing direction, and that is a change in motion. So that is the reason why okay, you do have okay, a net force and it's not equal to zero. Uh, 13, why is a patient's leg, which is suspended, not falling down? Explain this in relation to Newton's laws. Okay, well, so if you take a leg, 
okay and you suspend it down so you know I'll just draw okay kind of a, a leg I'll do it as a free body diagram in here so let's say that we have something like like this obviously this is not the leg but you know it's suspended and why isn't it falling down well because there must be an equal libium reached right between okay so let's say if this is the weight of the leg so force of the gravity or just weight that is trying to pull it back down well there's going to be probably the force of tension because it is being suspended to uh, something okay and these two are equaling each other off and therefore the net force that you have is going to be equal to zero so these two particular forces are going to cancel each other off so this force right here the force of tension okay and then the weighted force are basically equal and opposite in direction all right so that's what you have so you have kind of newton's first law acting right there um, and then newton's i guess third law because for every action you have an equal and opposite reaction okay so well the reaction is that there's a tension which is created okay opposite to the actual weight so that's newton's third law now Newton's second law, I guess you can bring it in because you can talk about F net, although this is not accelerating in any way. So it's not really Newton's second law. So there you have that. Now, the next one that you have, okay, so this one is a little bit easier, okay, for us. So all we have to do is calculate the force of gravity. So let me put that back in here. So let me paste it. So this is what we have right there calculate the force of gravity in newtons of the following so we have medication here so this is for part a well the weight is just equal to mass times gravity so in this case just be careful with the first one because it's in grams so you'd have to change it to kilograms so it's going to be 0 0.25 times 9.8 and this will give you what the result is so let's see what that would be 0 0.25 times 9.8 so it's very minimal so it's 2.45 newtons um, or if you want this to two significant figures it's just 2.5 newtons so that would be the first one the second one so for part b well weight is equal to so this is 3.2 multiplied by 9.8 this is already in kilograms so that one is much easier we don't have to do any conversions 3.2 times 9.8 and this would be so 31.36 all right so that's newtons again and you, know, you can put it to 31 newtons if they want you to round just to two sig figs which is the same amount now if you're doing these in word problems right and these are intermediate steps then you know don't round just keep the decimals there for yourself and only round kind of the final answers but in this case these are the final answers so that is it for this one and then the last one, the human adult femur bone can withstand about 4,000 newtons of force before breaking what mass in kilograms would this be equivalent to? Well, if you're equating and you're assuming that this would be the weight, so that means that you have the weight equation. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. So really what this is saying is that if we know the weight, right, we divide it by gravity, well, we're gonna get mass. So in this case, Again, this is not going to be a very difficult question. 4,000 divided by 9.8, and that's approximately 408 kilograms. All right, so that's what you would have there. Now, this one's only to one sig fig, so you can say, you know, 400, kilo, uh, 400 kilograms approximately. That's what this would be. That is all that you would do here. All right, so that completes these examples. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.